All right. Um, I want to get one thing out of the way before I go too much further with this. And this can be done preheat treat or post heat treat, depending on what kind of tools you have to do this. Um, what I'm going to put in the knife blade here is called a choil, C H O I L. And it is essentially just a place to begin your cutting edge. And it really helps uh, when resharpening the knife. Um, it gives you a starting point uh, to start your stone. And instead of having just no transition here, um, you'll find that you can really start marring up these surfaces because you don't have a definite starting point to start riding that knife on your stone. So this, this helps in just defining where your cutting edge starts. And I said pre or post heat treat, depending on what kind of tools you have. Well, I'm, I use these little diamond files, um, and these could be used after the steel is heat treated. But it's just, um, you want to use a small little radius as you, as you can. And on this knife, excuse me, on this knife, you can see it there. And as I said, it just gives that cutting edge a place to begin. And it really helps the uh, the owner of the knife uh, just have a good starting point on their sharpening stone. And like I said, without it, you're going to get scratches up here in the polished part of the knife right up in here. And it doesn't look very good. Some knife designs don't need it because they have one just incorporated into the blade design. Like that one there. Um, that's just part of the design of the knife. But... If you don't have that, it is nice to kind of provide that for your for your customer. So I start with a, uh, I've got two grades of these diamond files. One's a rough and one's a fine. Doesn't really matter, the, the fine one will cut. I just get my finger there and if you're in doubt, um, if you don't think your finger will serve as a good enough guide, you can certainly put that filing jig back on that we ground this to. But just, you don't try to take too much at once. And you start going across, and you're just doing a little semicircular indentation. And because it is a radius and not a V groove, you don't have to worry about that turning into a crack at heat treatment. So now that we've got something established, we can just start taking cuts across until we feel like it's deep enough. And I just do it right there where the plunge cut starts. And as I said, with these diamond files, I can do this after heat treatment as well. I've done this for customers' knives that didn't have one and they wanted one. Now I have other circular files, um, chainsaw files and things like that that I could be using, but they're a little too big in diameter for this this size of a blade. And you just take your time and just work that to where you feel like it's, it, it's deep enough and you don't need a whole lot of, uh, of a choil there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this done before I do any more grinding um, over on the grinder and then um, I'll finally finish up with the fine grit and we'll be finished with it. But I wanted to show you that before I get into any other steps. Okay, I got the, uh, I got the false edge formed in there and it's subtle. Um, it's not real defined. As I said, if somebody wanted a if somebody wanted a, a sharpened edge, I would take this a little deeper. Um, but like I said, it would be no big deal to, to form a cutting edge on top. I don't particularly like double edged knives myself when I think, you know, one edge is fine. But this thins everything and aids in penetration. So I'm going to form the cutting edge prior to heat treat. I do that easily. Um, cutting edge angle is important 20 to 22 degrees. And what I've done is I've made a little jig here. This is a Delrin slide that I've made. And this is a, the exact right angle. So all I do is, is I just run that on there. And I don't take it to a point or an edge. But I just get most of the steel out of the way. Just running it like that. 
Um, so when I get onto the stones and put the real cutting edge on here, there's a whole lot less work to do. Um, and because when I go to sharpen this, it'll be at 58 Rockwell or thereabouts. And um, it, it'll take a lot less time to sharpen it. If I do most of the hogging off right now before we get into the furnace. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to be moving on to heat treatment. And what I'm doing here, it's a pretty important step. Prior to heat treatment, um, I give it a hand sanding. I use this piece of brass. This is a quarter inch brass as a backer. What this does at this point is it will show me any dig-ins or little holes or imperfections or very deep scratches that you really want to get out of this, uh, this steel before heat treatment. It can be murder to get a deep scratch out after heat treatment when the surrounding metal is hard. So this is a uh, this doesn't take long, but it's prudent to do that on to do it on this side of heat treatment. So this is just some wet or dry. This is 400. And as you go across, any deep scratches are really going to show up. And if you're careful in their grinds. Um, and not go too deep with a really rough grit before you step up to a finer grit you're going to find that you're not going to have any deep scratches waiting for you at this point but it, it's always good to check I do the flat back here it's going to show uh, from where the handle ends up to the plunge cut and then I just come forward this water holds the grit and the metal that you're taking off up, up in suspension and it kind of aids um, in showing those scratches and like I said I don't see any so I'm gonna I'm gonna run it up here I'm gonna check the false edge in the same way and then we're going to foil wrap this and get it uh, into the furnace. Okay, I've got this knife ready to heat treat. I've cleaned it off. I'm getting ready to foil wrap it. And the reason I foil wrap, uh, I've got this pretty well where I want it to be as far as finish. And I don't really want to change anything. And if I don't foil wrap it, it'll decarb. And I have to grind that off and then I lose definition and some dimension. So I want to avoid that. And short of having an atmospheric controlled furnace, this is the next best thing. There's a lot of small machine shops that make tools, cutters. If they do their heat treating in-house, unless they have a pretty elaborate furnace, they do this. These are little razor blades, so you got to be careful. So I just use these to form the crimp real tight. And I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to close that all the way down. You want a good sharp crease. And then we're going to do that again. And that's going to seal this side. Then we'll do each end. You have to stay away from the point of your knife or the corner back here. You'll tear your foil. And then you'd, you might as well start again with another piece of foil. We'll fold these flat. Do a double fold. And then, you know, before you seal it up, get the air out like this. This foil will form down pretty well to the definition of the knife. Okay, that's ready to go 
on the piece of refractory that I put it in with a slot in it and we're going to turn the furnace on and bring this up we're going to stop at about 1250 um, and let everything normalize and then we're going to ramp up slowly to about 1475 and we'll go into an oil quench so I'll take you over there when it's that time okay it's been in there long enough so the first thing I do is I turn off that pyrometer that's battery operated still I'm going to go straight into the oil and keep it down there because of the foil about 30 seconds and let's go straight in we just start moving it back and forth that's about 30 seconds you bring it out and if it's not smoking then you've left it in long enough okay I'm gonna get this wiped down I'll get it over there to the bench and show it to you okay it's cooled off I've unfolded one in and I'm just gonna cut through is the easiest way to open these This stuff is sharp uh, on the corners. All right. You see what the foil wrap does? That knife is as clean as when we put it in there, but it's uh, it's fully hardened. It's still nice and warm. And we'll keep it in this cloth so it doesn't cool off too quick. All right. And this is always my little test. You can tell by the sound and the feel that that's nice hard steel. So we're looking at it, and we stayed straight. And I didn't really worry about that too much because it's a, it's a short knife. Long ones can warp. All right, so it's actually going to discolor more in the draw. Um, but we're going to take it in there. The little drawing oven is heated up. So in it goes for two hours at 475 degrees and we'll give you a look when it comes out of that okay we're out of heat treat and it's cooled off now I just laid it over on the anvil uh, in the center of the blade we have a purplish blue and then toward the outer parts we have that straw color so we have some flexibility in the blade and then out here we have good edge holding so that's pretty much what I wanted I'm going to clean this up and um, we're going to get started making the handles. I've already started working on, I brought the Makarta over and I'm going to uh, shape out the slabs. I'm going to make a pattern for the handles. Um, so just to speed up making those. And I'll use this and make an aluminum pattern for the blank and then they'll be drilled for the individual knife. Um, as we put them together. But I'm going to get started on that now. But the heat treating uh, went, went really well.